Okay, folks, it is 6 o'clock, so we're going to get going here with uh, our agenda items. If you're just walking in, we do have a sign-in sheet. If you want to get on the way out, that's fine as well. It's just up on Adrian Gill's desk right there on your way out so we can keep track of attendance. That'd be great. Um, please note the chat is disabled on the Zoom, so your comments should be made uh, vocally tonight. And um, if you're here in person, we have a, a live mic at the podium for you to make comments because that is the focus of our meeting tonight. So before we dive into the meat of the agenda, let's go through commissioner introductions. And my name is Lincoln Frasca, I'm a Parks Commissioner. My name is Emily Donaldson, I'm also a Parks Commissioner. Andrew Brewer, Parks Commissioner. Stephanie Hunt, Parks Commissioner, joining on Zoom. Thank you, Stephanie. And park staff, we have Alec 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 Parks, Parks, Parks Director. Parks Director. Oh, I should be muted. Sorry. Okay, excellent. The next is we will need a motion to approve tonight's agenda, April 9th, as well as the April 2nd minutes. So moved. Okay, Andrew Brewer with the motion and second. Emily with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, um, hear an opposition from a non-commissioner on that. Well, if all the commissioners approve the minutes and the agenda, that motion is gonna carry. And we are speeding along here to review the proposed changes to the dog rules in Hubbard Park. Um, so I've prepared a bit of an introduction and then I'm gonna open it up um, to you all, because that's really why we're here tonight. But I first would like to start by addressing the energy around the topic of, of leashing dogs in, in Hubbard Park. Um, this isn't a new problem. This isn't um, you know, something that has just come up in the last couple weeks, or couple months, or couple years even. This is a decades old issue. And this commission, uh, we're short Kasha tonight, our chair, unfortunately, but this commission, including Kasha, has been um, engaged with the issue of, of off-leash or leashing in the park for the last couple of years since we started the management plan process and ran some surveys acknowledging the uh, folks who weren't visiting the park because of off-leash dogs. That came to my attention about a couple of years ago. In the past year, we assembled a dog committee and they have been forefront on this issue and leading the way with surveys and public outreach. So I'd like to thank their work because what they've done in, this, um, in their outreach efforts and the information and reports and surveys they've released um, is the reason we are here today with as much information we have and with as much public input and participation as we have. And I see 20, 27 people on the chat here and about a dozen in the room. So I would like to credit the, the dog committee for getting the word out. The next thing I want to say is that although we definitely do not have a consensus and likely never will on this issue, everybody is working towards a solution that highlights simplicity, complicity, and enforceability. Those are words I heard from the dog committee last meeting on April 9th, and I fully support and I think everybody in this room can agree that that's what we're here to do. We want to find something that works for the greatest amount of people and is simple and is easy to follow and is easy to enforce from a park staff and from a community and neighbor perspective. Next, I want to thank our park staff. Uh, their professional recommendation that we'll be addressing tonight reflects institutional knowledge that is valued across the community and highly regarded across this commission. I'd like to thank the community, everybody in this room, everybody on the Zoom for showing up tonight as well as last week and helping us slow this process down and increasing the public participation and increasing the amount that you all are able to help steer the ship of the parks in Montpelier and helping us to realize that we needed to pause and not vote at last week's special meeting. And we're here tonight not to make a vote or make any decision, but to hear from you all to inform our next hearing and final vote on May 7th. Moving on to the original proposal by the dog committee. Um, this proposal, which is outlined and commented on on the Parks Commission update on the Hubbard Park dog policy. 
This proposal focused on a um, 2 to 4 p.m. leashing rule across Hubbard Park and was ultimately something that the commission couldn't accept <coughs> based on the fact that we all agreed it didn't adequately address the equitable goals that we were trying to create more of an equitable park in Hubbard Park, more of a welcoming space. So tonight we're here to hear feedback on the park's update on the Hubbard Park dog policy that was the commissioner's response to the park staff professional recommendation as well as the dog committee's initial recommendation. Again, we will be making no decisions tonight and nothing will be voted on until the 7th of May. So the park's, the park's professional recommendation has two major points. And the first option with there would be to leash all of the core or southern area of Hubbard Park. You can think roughly of where the park's director the house sits right now, down through the parking areas and all the shelters. That's the core area, and that's about 100 acres. And then the next part of that recommendation would be to keep off leash all the time the northern half, about 150 acres of Hubbard Park. The other point that the commission is considering is modifying this zone boundary to allow for more off leash access, potentially beginning the off leash and on leash boundary between the two shelters, the old and the new shelter, in a field which many people see or feel today is more an off-leash dog field, but is also additional parking and would allow for easier access to off-leash space if the, the boundary for this zone solution was there. The next part of this alternative plan would be to introduce a zone, excuse me, it would be to introduce a time constraint where there would be certain times of the day where there could be off-leash access to the core area. For example, in New York City Central Park, they have off-leash in the entire park until 9 a.m., and then the entire park is leashed until 9 p.m. So that's really what we're doing here today. We want to hear from you, uh, and we want to hear directed comments about this, the, what I just outlined, those bullets, which are the parks which is the professional recommendation that we're all considering. And before I pass it on, I want to see if there's anything that other commissioners or park staff want to add to what I just said. OK. Well, with that, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, 6.08. We have until 7 PM to hear from as many people that would like to speak. And um, I want to keep about a two-minute cap on comments so we can hear from the most people as possible. So please be respectful. Please be listening actively. We want to hear support for others' ideas, but we don't need to hear ideas again and again. Everything is being recorded tonight, and all the emails people have been sending are also being recorded and compiled. I apologize if you haven't had a response yet. We are reading and receiving those comments and really do appreciate them. So with that, if there's a representative from the dog committee that would like to speak, I'd like to offer them the opportunity to speak to the memo that was released earlier today and begin the public comment period. period. OK. Can we, um, can we just pause before? I think uh, there's something in the chat about folks can't hear on Zoom, and I just want to make sure we clear that up. <clears throat> okay. I am able to hear, and I'm on Zoom. We can hear you. <laughs> And I'm just going to go ahead and <coughs> mute everybody and then unmute um, unmute the council chamber. Is that what you need in order to hear the council chamber? Just because I think there's quite a few people who are not muted right now. All right. Mute everyone. OK. You think we're all right? Uh, and then I'm going to do a trial talking into this thing and see if people can hear me. Uh, okay. You need to unmute city council chamber. I can't hear you. Yep. I'm going to keep talking. Oh, I'm hearing sound in here. That seems promising for Zoom. I might just offer that if no one on Zoom heard your opening statement, All right. you may need to repeat. I think some of them did, okay. but maybe not all of them. Yeah, and we'll make the recording available as soon as we can if you did miss the intro. But I'm going to hand it over now. Yeah. Please introduce yourself and then 
Um, yeah. Great. I'm Dana Dwine Yardley. I'm one of the members of the dog committee. I live here in Montpelier. Um, the other three members of the committee are in the room, Jessa, Diana, and Robin. And I so appreciate working with these three folks. Um, we had a short window of time between last week and this week. We're gathered again in just seven days. So that was not enough time for us to go through a full consensus process and come up with another alternate um, proposal for you all. But we did meet several times and had some really sort of engaging, wrestling, deep conversations about this issue, which is so big and complex and wrestly for many people. Um, we have a memo that's in the back of the room. If you're here, you can grab it. It's also on the Parks Commission website. I encourage you to look at it. And I'm just going to give a quick summary of what's in there in hopefully like two minutes, and then we can hear from people, which is really what we're here to do. Um, one of the main things we did call out in this memo is about public process. And I really want to thank you all for slowing it down and thanking the people last week who spoke up to slow it down. Um, we really, uh, one of the sort of guiding principles I think about about decision making is that it kind of, what the decision is matters less than the process. And if people feel heard, listened to, like they were treated fairly, like they had a chance to share their views, they're going to be more likely to be OK with whatever the final decision is. Um, and there's been some challenges to the process for us in this, in this dog committee and Parks Commission process. Um, we've had some support at some times, less support at other times. Deadlines have been communicated in a pretty rushed fashion. We haven't had totally clear communication from the Parks Commission on what our role should be and what we should be doing. And that's been frustrating and hard. Um, and we all care a bunch about this issue, so we're still here doing the work and I feel really grateful that the dialogue has opened up a lot in the last week, partly from last meeting, and we're in more communication. We wish that that had happened four or five months ago. So i um, happy to speak with you more personally about that feedback, but just wanted to say out loud that we really are here to champion the public process and the public input, um, and we want to make as much space as possible for as many people in Montpelier to weigh in on this. I know you have been talking about it for years and years, fully aware, but we're sort of coming to a head on this crucial decision, and like this is, a, again, that moment for people to feel heard and listened to. So thank you for doing that. I hope you continue to do that, and I want everybody who's listening to know that the dog committee is also receiving your written feedback. Um, members of the Parks Commission are kindly forwarding all of those emails to us, um, and we're reading them. So I want you to know that you have at least nine listening ears on your feedback who are, uh, we're at least in an advisory role of suggesting things to you all. So you should know that. Um, our we have some specific thoughts about this proposal to split the park into two zones, and they're mostly around accessibility of the northern section, uh, steepness of trails, uh, are they actually walkable by folks of lots of mobility levels, um, parking and access are, you know, what happens in mud season when a lot of the parking lots are closed, uh, are people able to access the park in, in points that they can access both north and south, um, and also just other amenities in the northern section, which is more rugged, more wild. Um, we really encourage the Parks Commission to like look at this holistically and not just make a dog decision, but say, OK, if we make this decision, then what maintenance things flow from that? Um, let's, let's make a full plan to support users of the park going forward, this is, would be a massive change. So let's look at the infrastructure of the park and make sure it works for people and that there's a clear, speedy, concrete plan to address that. Um, and I think the last thing I just want to leave you all with in this room and the people listening is just some of our big picture thoughts that sort of came up, those, those questions that don't necessarily have one right answer um, but are worth chewing on in a decision of this magnitude. And I'm just going to read the like top level of that from our memo. Um, and you can read more if you want. But as you speak, think about these things. Whose voices are not being heard in this process? What is the difference between harm and inconvenience? How do our overlapping identities inform our park use? And how do we balance the varied needs that come with that? What are we willing to give up to ensure that all members of our community have safe access to Hubbard Park? And how can the park be made safer and more accessible for everyone? Let the discussion begin. <laughs>
the raise hand function in person or online. It works in both spaces. OK, yeah, please. Hello, I'm Rob Hitzig. And let me just start off by saying I appreciate your efforts on this very difficult issue. I understand it's been going on for a long time. and. It's, a, it's not an easy one to tackle. Um, first, with the proposals, I, I thought the, the idea of, of, of emulating Central Park in New York was a good one, in that um, if New York could do it, <laughs> I think Montpelier could handle it, uh, with 9.30 being a cutoff, or perhaps that could be changed a little bit here and there, but that, that sounds like a, a very good proposal. Um, the big problem I have with the proposal that I saw online or on the, the sheets was that there isn't a corridor to get to that north section. And there are several um, trails in, that, in the, the southern section that aren't widely used that probably could be used for a corridor if we were going to go that that way. And the big problem being with without a corridor and without parking access is that by the time you get to that section, if you're just going for a, a, a moderate short hike, you're going to have to turn around immediately. So there's not really going to be access for off-leash. Um, and. I, I really don't want to think, I don't think we want to encourage the, the need for driving to get to the north section. So I think that, that's worth considering. Um, so if you want recommendations in terms of what trails might be used for getting, using as quarters, I think the natural area trail, maybe the ravine trail, um, those are very, um, they're not, not used much at all. And also the trail that, that's behind the, the manager's house, the one that goes from the ballpark all the way around, that's also a, quarter, a potential corridor trail. Just to, just to be clear, when you say corridor trail, <coughs> Rob, you're talking about a, an off-leash trail that would lead right. to the greater off-leash area. Right, if you're going to go that direction, that it would be great to have some way to get over there from the south end. You know, somebody's walking, like, from the meadow or from... Right. Okay. Right. Okay. They don't have to have a leash, and they can... Don't get, have to have and a And they can get to the, the, the bigger section without being on leash. And the big problem, one of the big problems with not just dog exercise, but but the dogs on leash are often more problematic meeting each other than off leash. So it'd be great to be able to get to that section off leash. Mm. That's, that's my thought. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple hands online. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know who was first, but we're gonna go with David Dobbs. And David, we can't hear yeah, you. Got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, thanks to everybody involved that's been working on this. I know it's not the uh, the the funnest thing to do, and um, this has been going on a long time. I am uh, uh, really encouraged to see the current proposal um, proposal from the that the commission's backing about this two area solution. I think it it. Um, has the chance to put this issue to rest after years of corrosive dispute and so on. Um, and its beauty is its simplicity and its equity. The park is divided roughly in half, actually 60-40. Um, and uh, as uh, Alex's proposal originally said, this gives anyone who wants to go to the park, whether they're, they're both people who mind, don't want off-leash dogs and those who don't mind can go there at any time. Am, am, I, am I done talking? Uh, this is where that's, okay, good. Um, no, the, the little thing, but, um, so I, 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 I think those are great assets to this thing. Um, 
what I am worried about is the suggestion that there be a time exception to uh, that suspends the on-leash zone and turns it into an off-leash leash zone. I don't see the reason for this, um, and I don't see the logic of having there be in in a we've the proposal creates equity. Equity should be the goal. This constraint, this this removal of the on leash only status in one half of the park compromises that equity. There, you will find no time of day where the where I, for instance, would be happy with that exception to the rule. Um, the morning is put kited par partly because some park places parks do this. Um, I don't. I don't think that's a good time. That that's uh, unfair to people whose whose only time to get uh, exercise in the park is in the morning, or who need early light for their mental health, or that want to go there and bird watch without the disturbances that dogs sometimes bring. I beg you not to water down the equity of this thing. You have a great simple solution. And it will be compromised if you start fiddling with it and making exceptions. Thank you, that's, David. That's all I got to say. Thanks, everyone, for your work. Uh, it's a big thing, and I'm impressed. Thank you. Your comments are noted. Okay, um, back to the room. Are there, is there anyone who'd like to speak? We Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, John Jose in Barry Street. Again, I also want to thank everybody who's been a part of this process and brought it this far. I really appreciate it. Um, reflecting back to the original work that was done by the consultant, I think it was a, maybe a couple of years ago now, I really thought that work was done on a um, good uh, scientific analysis with input from everybody, and I was actually very much in favor of what was originally proposed in that proposal. And to me, it's been disappointing that that proposal was not adopted and this process has had to drag on for so long. So the fact that this recommendation from the parks at least partially reflects that proposal, that at least some of the park would be off leash, I'm very much in favor of this. And as Mr. Dobbs stated, I'm also against the idea that there be any um, modifications made to the proposal as it is now. If anything, I'd like to see a larger area of the park extending up into the, a portion of the northern section to be off leash. So I'd like the recommendation as it is now, if anything, to stay as it is. Um, one thing I think it's important to remember is that this, this park is a multi-use facility. Uh, dog walking is only uh, one component of it, one use of it. There are many other uses, that some of which have been mentioned already tonight. I think that's really important to keep in mind. One thing I think that's forgotten sometimes, it's recognized in North Branch Park, the value of the wildlife we have there in, in the um, leash law. The wildlife, and Hubbard Park is no less valuable and it deserves all the protection it can get. And when you consider the impacts to large and small animals of dogs running off leash, ground nesting birds, the more protection they can get, the, the better. And um, yeah, I think this is a long running divisive um, problem as has been stated tonight. And I, I absolutely endorse what Parks is proposing. And like I said, if anything, I would in, uh, be in favor of the area being span expanded slightly northward. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, we're going back into the Zoom room. And Bronwyn, I'd, I'd seen you were trying to raise your hand earlier, so I think you're next. You are still muted, though, so you do have to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for this. Um, so uh, 
I'm a great user of the park, uh, really enjoy the park along with my husband and my dog. And um, uh, it's been my observation that most of the dogs that I've ever seen in the park are pretty well under control. Um, and so I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, preserving what access we can to the park. I agree that access from the north, from the um, northern part is difficult. Um, also, having walked in that area, uh, it's it's not very friendly to walk in, um, especially for people with mobility issues, et cetera. So if we're going to talk about, you know, making things equal, it would be nice if, if we we could all walk on, say, even pavement or something like that, um, because some of us are older, but we also have dogs. Um, I uh, have observed that there are owners whose dogs are not under voice control. Um, what we do with our dog is if our dog is off leash <clears throat> and we see somebody coming, we'll put him on leash, um, unless we know the people and the dog. Um, um my question really is about enforcing any of this. So, you know, I would like to see some uh, hours given to off leash. I think that's a sensible thing to do. Um, and um, uh, like the certain, certain times of day, I'd like to see the corridor where, where the, um, the dogs uh, in the parking areas around the new shelter and up around what we call the dog park. I'd like to see that remain open for uh, access, but, Understanding that, I mean, uh, I think we've there was some talk about a fencing area of the upper part. Um, I don't know what happened to that, um, but <clears throat> my my real question is about who's going to enforce any of this. Um, we don't. The town doesn't have the money. <laughs> are we, what are we going to do? Are we going to put police up there if we're talking about social control? I don't know what that means. Does that mean you can be nasty to somebody who who? has a dog off leash and vice versa. Uh, so that bothers me a bit. Um, uh, but at any rate, you know, I think it's it's very important to be equitable in our decisions. Um, if we can, I would I would really like to say if there are certain times of day um, that can be off leash for in, in, in certain areas of the park that are not as inaccessible as the northern area, that would be something I'd like to see. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay. Going once in the room. I'll do the room. Okay, please. Thanks, um, Justin Kolber. Um, thanks everyone for considering this. I, I support the corridor approach. I also do support a time approach. I think that would be more equitable. Um, I would suggest eight to 12 or nine to one or something in that range that gives some morning hours for dog walking. Uh, I do appreciate how Lincoln said we're trying to find something for the greatest amount of people, knowing we can't get to everyone. And I think that comes from the survey. A lot of hard work went into the survey. I would like to see the survey incorporated. And I know the survey found that 31% of people wanted leashing at all times. So the top choice was actually more enforcement at 46%. Um, but in any event, only 31% said they wanted leashing. And at that time, it was the core main park. There wasn't a north-south split for the survey. Um, and I'm someone who wants more enforcement. I want to be clear about the, that too. And the survey also found that there was, quote, a rough split between no change in the current system and more changes. Um, and I'm someone who wants more changes. We need, you know, better systems and better enforcement. So I agree with that. But if we have a rough split, I agree, let's split the park. So that's splitting the park, both space and time. And the current staff proposal of just geography, I don't think provides equity and I love how Dana reminded us about harm versus inconvenience. I worry that could there be harm to people who can't reach the north if you stick to just the geographical split versus just inconvenience. And I also appreciated, I, I think it was David's comment about equity. So I'm proposing equity of inconvenience. Here's a true compromise. And I, I shared this with Alec, I'll be very frank. Alec and I talked, he said he did a good job with the compromise because he made everyone unhappy. I said, I disagree. I think the 31% who want to unleash are very happy, but I think the rest is not sharing the same burden. So here's what a time split will give you. You're going to get four quadrants of grumbling. You're going to get, I want to walk my dog in the morning. I want to walk my dog in the afternoon. I want a picnic in the morning. I want a picnic in the afternoon. Everyone's going to grumble about some inconvenience because we're all sharing the resource equally. That's what a time split would do. Equity of inconvenience. 
that would be true compromise. I think that's shown on the survey. Uh, I think a time split is what is needed for equity. Uh, and I know, Alec, you wrote in your report that a time split wouldn't work because, quote, the most basic tenet of a park is to be there when you need it. I agree. And I know that the dog committee's recommendation from 2 to 4 p.m. of off-leash was too narrow of a time. Yeah, that was only a two-hour window. But to swing the other way and to ban dogs for 24 hours a day and give zero hours, that to me is going too far. So let's split the park, geography, and time. Can I just ask one follow-up yeah, question, because it came up in a comment too. What would more enforcement look like to you? Um, signage. And then when I'm walking my dog out there with my dog, Tybee, I will make sure that I, if someone's beyond the time zone, I will say, you know, we have the canine code of conduct. Can you please adhere to it? Um, and I, I would be like the, the personal, you know, dog person. I'd be happy to wear like a blue ribbon, you know, I'd, you know, say, hey, some of us are on the dog enforcement committee. We're here to make sure that we all follow this park. So we preserve this resource that we can all use. It can be a volunteer system and I'll be the first to, to spearhead it and to check in with Alec and anyone else on things like that. So like a, a committee like similar to what we have, but for enforcement and implementation. Of the <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to be in touch with all of you on, on how to do this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alec. Thank you, Justin. Amelia Vath. Hey there. Um, this is actually Rose. My wife is also wanting to speak later. Um, I am the chair of the Conservation Commission. Um, and I, I will say, like, before I make any remarks, that the Conservation Commission was not, like, brought into this conversation in any capacity. And so um, I'm not making any remarks on behalf of the Conservation Commission because we've not had any opportunity to discuss it as a whole. So any comments further are just my own. Um, but I do want to say, um, just from that mindset, um, I feel like as the chair, I have some responsibility to like advocate for this, um, just so that it's the most informed discussion possible. So, um, you know, there is a tool called Vermont Conservation Design where the state um, DNR has prioritized areas for habitat connectivity, surface water quality, um, physical landscape diversity, essentially areas that are like the most important places for continued, you know, connectivity and ecological value. Um, the northern part of the park that is like being proposed as off leash has the only block within the park um, that is identified as like high quality or high priority for the state. Um, not that this is like for or against dogs. I wanna be like very clear that I'm not speaking in this regard. Um, but I do think that introducing more off leash traffic and just traffic in general, I think we can all agree that, you know, this is going to increase a lot of traffic in the Northern part of the park. Um, that is going to like incentivize long-term, like more trails, more development in that Northern part of the park. And I think given its potential for being like priority habitat within the park that the state has identified. I really do think that there needs to be like a more thoughtful approach to this because I, I just worry that we're going to introduce a like a decision here that really increases the park's usage throughout, which is great in one way. Um, but I think being mindful of how that, that increased use is ultimately going to result in additional development. Even in the proposals that were sent out, it did say, you know, we could build a more accessible trail. We could do these things. There are a lot of different ecological values that that northern part like provide. And, you know, right now it just is not as much use. So it's providing obviously more of that value because there is less people going there. It's more of an opportunity for, you know, potential wildlife for these riparian areas to not get you know, worn down by dogs. Um, that's something we've done on the commission before is like the fencing in the vernal pools in the Southern part of the park. Um, and we don't, we're not funded, right? We got zeroed out. So I think that there's a lot here that's like, oh, we could do these things, um, which I, again, I'm not like for or against, I'm not speaking to that today. Um, I do feel like it's important to like maintain my role as chair there. Um, but I do think this is not a one single decision. This is going to have long-term impacts on the landscape of the northern part of the park and is how do we protect the resources there? Um, so that's my comment. It's not really one way or the other. It's just one of those things that I, I hope that you all consider um, 
and I think it'd be good for the commission for the conservation commission to be like a space for that that more style of conversation around this rather than you know like dog access you know so yeah thank you point well taken rose thank you okay i'm gonna keep getting these hands in the in the zoom room if uh it's quiet here still all right rebecca bluen yeah hi thank you for hearing me rebecca bluen on um, Bailey Ave, so I bought the park. Um, just the comment I wanted to make is I looked at the new proposal, the area proposal today, um, and was like, oh, okay, we divided half and half. Um, we did with respect to acreage, but when you look at length of trail, um, it, you know, if you take out the Nature Center Trail, which is not a well marked trail, nor is it, you know, nor is it a round trip trail there's not there's not an equal level or equal length of trail that i can see um in both parts so i feel like the acreage interesting but that's not that's not indicative of of how much trail we have to work with and the other thing is if you look at the whole map you can circle the entire north branch park and put that in the purple so when you look at that comparison of the north branch park and this whole portion of the park it is, it is definitely not equitable. Um, I would reflect also, it's also, you know, I walk it almost daily. That is a rough, um, that is a harder trek, harder trail, harder area to walk in. Um, and um, I, I just respect that, I respect the decisions and the ideas about time um time blocks maybe longer blocks um and i and i'm sorry i don't remember your name but you sort of the brilliant four quadrants you're absolutely right it is not equal inconvenience um so i i appreciate that there are other options and and i understand that the two to four isn't isn't the one but i don't think that this one is is equitable either thank you rebecca Okay, let's hear from Linda Young, please. Hey guys, um, first thanks for doing this. I know it's like even more contentious to deal with than potholes. So I appreciate the work everybody's putting into it. Um, I have wrestled with this a lot. A lot of you know me, I have a dog. I've always had a dog of some sort and I'm up there a lot. Um, and I have a lot of, um, I feel like people who walk their dogs up there are actually often really active participants in helping to manage the park because we have our eyes on it a lot. So I think we're contributing. But I also, you know, I don't love getting run into by other people's dogs. It's not my favorite thing. And I have friends who um, don't go to the park because they're scared of dogs. And so I, you know, I've wrestled with this a lot. And I've asked myself over and over again, am I just feeling, you know, am I just being entitled? Do I just want it my way? But the more I think about it, I actually think it is a question of equity. And I think that, um, you know, we're, we're all taxpayers one way or another, whether we're paying through our rent or directly through taxes. Almost none of us have our own back 40, right? So um, we have to share this resource, but one of the real important uses of it for a large portion of the population of the city is that it is essentially our back 40. And it is where we can go with our dogs and let them exercise in a natural way and we can exercise in a natural way. Um, in terms of things like, oh, sorry, I'm going to check my notes here. But I had a chance to use North Marsh Park a bit last year because I have a puppy who was too young to go to Hubbard at the time. He had to be with a few dogs. And I, had, I, I was like, wow, I haven't really spent time here, but it's great. North Marsh is a great park and it's all on leash. And it has a wonderful picnic shelter, and it has a playground for children. And it, I mean, a real playground. And it has a great flat trail for people who have some accessibility and mobility issues. They can walk all the way into the North Branch Nature Center too, and all around that field. Um, it's got wildlife, better wildlife preservation in many regards. Um, and so I'd like to see this equity question addressed in a more holistic way, bringing North Branch Park into the picture. And I also want to be thinking about, we have, um, those of us who walk up there every day know that we have some very valued community members in this, in this town. 
who um, are mobility challenged and, and are older and have dogs that they um, want to walk off leash and it would be really hard for them to get into the northern section and use it regularly. I saw Alex note in, um, in his proposal about making improvements to the trails there. I think that's a really interesting proposal and I, 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 I would be, that would make me feel a lot better. Um, but I'm wondering how quickly that could be done and what the impacts to wildlife would be if we went that route. So anyway, I, I'll leave it there, but I just, um, yeah, I've, I've, some of you have heard me talk about this before, so you know I've been all over the map, but the more I think about it, I just think equity is, um, it's not just about Hubbard, it's about the bigger picture. Thank you, Linda. Okay, I see Cassandra Hemingway's hand next. Hi, folks. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, one question, I'm just going to say them both, and then um, that's all I have to say. Um, would the Parks Commission, should you decide to implement the split of the park, would you be willing to wait until there is... Um, you know, a more accessible trail in the northern part of the park and more parking and the kinds of things people have brought up. That's first question. And the second question is on, along similar lines, have you considered doing something like this similar to a pilot project for say six months or a year and then reassess um, to see how it worked out and how the park is being used? Thank, thank you, Cassandra. I don't, I don't think we're prepared. I'm certainly not prepared to speak for the commission in response to that, those questions, but I know they're being, that is what we're talking, that is what we're all curious about. And I know, uh, especially the, what you mentioned about evaluating is something that's forefront of my mind. Um, does anyone else want to say anything? Um, yeah, we did consider a pilot study um, last year when we were putting out the management plan, and we actually decided to go with the dog committee instead um, to get more data and more survey results. Um, so it, it is something we've considered, um, but we do feel in general, you know, we've had some incidents recently in the park, and I think there is a sense of urgency to implement something. Okay. Now we're about at 43, 643. So a little bit more than 15 minutes left for comments. Okay. I saw this hand go up first in the room. Suzanne Eikenberry. Um, I live about three blocks from the park, from the um, frog pond side. I'm one of those people who does not have a dog and I drive to North Branch to access the side of the park that currently has fewer dogs. And so the person who said there's an equality of inconvenience, I really appreciated that concept because I think that my experience has been, I often walk up to the edge of the park and then turn around that I see a lot of cars going up to the park with dogs and I see very few pedestrians going up to the park with dogs. I think that the more car traffic shouldn't be part of the decision on north-south split. Um, I'm really curious about if we flipped that north-south split and the north end plus north branch park was the on-leash section and the off-leash section was the frog pond section, if that would create that sense of equity that people are looking for. And I really appreciate the tone of respect that I hear from everybody and the commitment to making it equal is really it's lovely. It's different from previous conversations about dogs in the park I've experienced. Um, I also want to thank the dog committee on one of their suggestions that I really appreciate it was doing more education. Like when you get your dog license, um, I would love to see the code of conduct strengthened to clarify that your dog has to be both in voice control and within sight line, because a big part of why we don't go is Many off-leash dogs are fine, but you don't know when you see an off-leash dog what you're experiencing. And so few of the off-leash dogs have a clear owner in sight line of where I am, their dog, to the owner. Um, and I think that that is really the bulk of what I want to say. I appreciate the um, ideas that came from Alec and from the 
Parks Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Did you want to go? You want to do the online we'll, we'll take an online round here. Okay, have not yet heard from Beth Pombar. Hey everyone. Um, I just really want to also uh, say so many thanks to everyone that has uh, been working on this for so long. Um, the one thing that, you know, it, just an idea around the north south split, um, what I don't hear in that proposal is like a re really easy access point for just that quick, the dog the dog park, the little dog park, right? Where people uh, who don't, who aren't actually gonna be able to go for a longer walk in the park um, can just get to that and at least let their dog run around there. Um, we all know that um, puppies when they're young need socialization with other dogs to grow into being good dogs and to learn that park behavior and some sort of um, very easily accessible like dog park, small contained dog park area would also be a great asset. So if there was a longer walk that we had to go to for South for off leash, at least having that smaller section, which could be, you know, I've lived in Montpelier for like 20 years and I, this is the first time that I heard that what I always called the dog park up below new shelter uh, may be the ballpark. Uh, I've always called that very first thing off on the across from the frog pond, the ballpark. Anyways, that would be a great space for that contained dog park that is just easily accessible walking up from the meadows um, and maybe doesn't connect to anything and is just a little bubble where there can be some off leash dog stuff too. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Beth. everyone i'm brian pfeiffer and um i live in i live in the city I've, i will first confess to a lot of ignorance uh, about these specific proposals because i've been traveling and not here at all for the last month and a half or so so part of its negligence on my part and part of its absence on my part um but i i've lived in montpelier for the better part of 40 years and um, i'm a former parks commissioner and a parks commission chair who uh, has been in the thick of this when it was really acrimonious. So I congratulate you first and foremost for, for how far you've gotten and how civil it's been and how wonderful, how wonderfully civil the discussion's been. Um, so, but based on my limited knowledge of what I'm seeing so far, because I think you've got a great proposal here in the staff's recommendation. But I, from what I've heard, and I really came mostly to listen tonight, is I would suggest that you try and take around the edges to address some of these concerns about access and convenience. But I hope that you can stick with a zoned approach like this. Um, and if anything, you know, I am. I am, uh, I'm, owned, I'm owned by an English shepherd named Odin, who uh, is on leash and off leash. He's off leash where he can be safely off leash and he's on leash where he needs to be on leash. And um, I, 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 would, I would hope that you could, you know, tinker with this zone proposal and make it work better for folks who have concerns. And um, just two other quick points are that, um, one is the surveys are great. We get a really good sense of opinion, but the ratios, like going with numbers on these surveys, just be cautious of that um, uh, unless they were truly a representative sample and truly scientific surveys. And uh, the other thing is the canine code of conduct. I wrote those little cards, the blue and green ones, you know, and they're great. I, they're great, but it's true that having walked in this park for many years, that far too often still, I see a dog first with no keeper, with no guardian. And so that the, it's hard enough to enforce the, the, the code. And I'm not sure that we can do a lot of enforcement. I like to think that we can rely on the goodwill of most of us, you know, and I think that's all we can do. That's what we, get, that's what we can try our best to do. I don't know that we have the resources to let enforcement be an obstacle here. Um, and... Uh, Lastly, I would still like, you know, I got the point about inconvenience, shared inconvenience. I would just love to approach this as shared convenience and recognizing this is a park with many uses and many people who come for various reasons. I just want to see if there's a way that we can look at it, making people comfortable 
and making dogs comfortable as well. So thanks. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Okay. Becca Ruth. Hello, thank you. Um, and thanks to everyone that has been working on this. Uh, for many years, and thinking about it, as, as have I, um, I am currently a dog owner um, and have a dog who does very much appreciate being off leash in the park. Um, I've also had a dog who was reactive to other dogs and I rarely went to the park because constantly telling people, my dog's not friendly is not a very like enjoyable way to spend time in the park. Um, Cause you constantly feel a little bit like I have to keep saying my dog's not friendly and she is just not in certain circumstances. So, and I do see it from both ways um, in terms of, you know, the desirability of on leash and off leash. Uh, I've also done ski drawing with my dog, um, which means that uh, you're cross country skiing with your dog pulling you. And in that circumstance, you actually strongly prefer that other dogs are also on leash because um, otherwise you can get kind of tied up in your own rope, which is not fun. Um, overall, I have a couple reactions uh, to this proposal um, currently in place. Overall, I prefer a time-based solution. I've lived a number of a number of places where there's on and off leash days, odd, odd days versus even days in some places complemented based partly on days for mountain biking. Um, mountain biking and off-leash dogs don't always go particularly well together. Um, and I find the on and off-leash days inconvenient, but not um, terribly challenging to overall access and access from a variety of locations. One of the things that I think I bring uniquely um, to conversations sometimes is the transportation approach of someone who I don't have a car in Montpelier, I'm not here full time, um, but my sister who lives in Montpelier is uh, car free and also has never had a driver's license as an adult um, or as a child for that matter, um, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, and so, uh, you know, many people who live near the park walk to the park. I would hate to see more driving to the park um, from people who have perhaps specifically set up their life based on the idea and the choice that they want to be car free or car light. Um, and people who live in other parts of Vermont certainly have not made that choice. Um, so it's a kind of an upset of the status quo with regard to transportation. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I prefer a time-based solution to a geographic solution. Um, if there is to be a geographic solution, um, I would find it really odd to put the dogs off leash in the area of the park that has greater wildlife, including the deer yard where we are already requested to leash up. And um, I would find that the more developed part of the park be, to be much more appropriate for off-leash dogs um, than the, the northern part of the park. Um, if a geographic split is to be further considered, um, I'd really love to see the maps so that we're talking about the same areas instead of having kind of these descriptions and you have to kind of construct the map in your head. Um, and a geographic split, I think I would love to see more of an analysis, again, not just of the acreage, but of the types of resources. The, um, you know, could there be one shelter in each zone? Um, the types of trails, um, easier walking versus harder walking, the lengths of trails. And so if a geographic split is to be further considered, I hope that the commission will do a little bit, maybe more of a slowdown of the process in order to do some of those types of analysis of the geographic split. But again, overall, I think a time-based solution is to be preferred, whether it's whole days or good chunks of days. Um, but I, I guess I think the thing that's easiest is like a whole day on odd days and off and odd and even days in terms of on and off leash. 
Thank you. Thank you, Becca. And I, I should have started with this, but we do have a map of the proposed leashed core area, and that's going to be on the front page of the commission's web page on the city site under staff recommendation for changes to Hubbard Park's dog rules. And that's where you can find that line, so you don't have to try to etch it out in your head. But thanks for bringing that up. It's also here. Thank you. And we have we've got um, hard copies in the room for those folks who are here. And I dropped a link in the chat to um, a document with the map in it. Thanks, Stephanie. All right. Hi, my name's Rachel, um, and I'm a Montpelier resident. Um, I also have been posting some information online and just want to mirror what I saw today, which is what I thought is a productive and successful public meeting. And I just want to encourage um, to continue these conversations. I think as you saw today, people are interested in a civil conversation about substantive matters. People do read the proposals that you put online. People have taken a lot of time and effort to fill out the surveys and to read your proposals. And so if you can trust the process and trust that people want to contribute productively to issues that impact their lives, such as how we spend our time and how we use the park, I think you can see that there will be productive outcomes. So I just, I, I've heard on and off that you know, people are concerned or scared that the public is going to attend a meeting or like, what if the bridge comes to a meeting? I think that's fine. We're a community. We all want to live together. We want everybody to have a successful experience in the park. Nobody wants people to feel unsafe. I think we can all agree on those shared values. So let's just like, I want to everyone collectively pat ourselves on the back for having a productive conversation and realizing that it is possible. I also want to recommend that there could be more public process. I think another special meeting to hear from the to hear from people um, would be productive and could be really helpful. Um, I heard today that the chair of the Conservation Commission in her informal capacity had suggested some consultation with the Conservation Committee to understand the wildlife impacts in the northern area of the park. I think that would be a really important conversation. I also heard the Dog Committee, which has been reviewing this issue for months, is interested in some more space and time to review the proposal and to weigh in. And I think that that is a reasonable approach. Um, I, so I just want to encourage the commission to consider all of the alternatives and the ideas that you heard today. I think it is really helpful when you update the website with real time information. People obviously read it. <laughs> they are very interested. And so if you have conversations behind closed doors and you don't put things in writing, you're not giving people an opportunity to substantively weigh in. And obviously people want to weigh in, but no one's trying to fight. This is not a dog fight. This is an actual public community conversation. So let's let's go for it. Let's have another meeting. Let's hear from people. And then what the result of that is a community-based solution that people feel like they had input in. And then you don't have to worry about pe policing people that are very unhappy to be banished to a northern part of the park. You'll have community buy-in. People, I mean, the dog off-leash dog users are there every day. And nobody wants to be in violation of some rule or feel like they're doing something that's like in, that they're going to get in trouble. We want to follow the rules. We want to protect the park. We just need information. Let people contribute a solution. Let people weigh in on it. With my last second, I just want to say that I do support a time-based solution, but for me, that's less important than the public process. So just want to encourage you to lean into that. Don't shy away from it. This is part of our city government. government. This is how it works. So that's all. Thanks very much, Rachel. Um, okay, so we're we're closed. We're closing out now. Um, I do want to just make sure, in, in case anybody isn't clear with Parks Commission's rules, we can't meet outside of these public meetings. So we can't have a quorum outside of these meetings. So the conversations we're having and hearing tonight are the first time that we're able to do that together. And digesting the information as a commission has to happen in a publicly warned setting. I'm going to give the last comment to Sean Beckett here, and then we're going to wrap up for the night. So Sean, we got Amelia also just recently raised their hand. I think that's okay. That's not an old hand. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. We got two more comments. We got Sean and then Amelia, and then we're calling it. Oh yeah. Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, Sean Beckett, uh, live on Elm Street. Um, I just wanted to um, echo something that the last speaker said. I uh, I work with North Branch Nature Center. My thoughts about this aren't you know aren't reflective of the the Nature Center. But one thing that's been really really wonderful at the Nature Center um, is that. Uh, over a span of several years, we began enforcing a dog policy there, and we were really concerned that, you know, it would be very difficult to enforce. Um, but really, the community of dog walkers, the community of Montpelier has, has really done a wonderful job of being able to um, kind of, um, you know, uh, self-enforce. And so I'm, I'm really hopeful and optimistic that, you know, that by coming up with a really 
um, clean and clear policy for Hubbard Park, um, yeah, our community is going to want to respectfully, um, you know, uh, you know, toe that line. Um, and uh, it's it's just been really beautiful to see that at the nature center. Is it is you know is the is the leash law at the nature center enforced perfectly? Um, no, certainly not. But it's it's been you know really really smooth and easy. And um, and I definitely see uh, this community, especially after a meeting like uh, this evening. Um, I see this community being able to to bring that up into Harvard Park as well. And, and as long as the um, the you know the the rules are are nice and clear and easy to enforce, easily signed. Um, then I think it'll be, uh, our community has it in us to be able to do this. So yeah, thanks very much. And thanks for all your work. Thank you, Sean. Okay. So I think Amelia, you've got, got the last word tonight, then we'll close this out. Okay. Hi, my name's Amelia Vath. My wife spoke earlier. Um, I just want to say as a dog owner, I've really appreciated being able to, um, train my dog at Hubbard Park um, and teach her good trail etiquette. Um, I also understand that it's my responsibility as a dog owner to be the one policing her behavior. So if she's not having a good day, she needs to be on a leash. I would like to see more folks keeping their dog on leash if they cannot be within sight and voice control because often when we've been walking in the park um, a dog without a human has approached us, and that's really difficult to, um, you know, police a dog that's not my own. Um, that being said, I want to echo the sentiments of some folks who spoke earlier about sharing the inconvenience. I think if we look at the two parts of the park that we're talking about right now, we can all agree that they're not similar. Um, they don't have similar trail trail systems. Um, they're not equidistant to downtown and they're not um, equally accessible. So I would also be for a zone and time split. Um, and I'm also, I just want to throw out there, I would be fine with um, making specific areas where folks like to congregate and have picnics um, completely on leash areas such as the Sledding Hill and the pavilions. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. Hey, thank you, Amelia. Thank you, everybody. We did it at 7, 7.03. I think we heard a lot tonight. I definitely am starting to cramp up a little bit. It's all good information. We have the recording. Um, thank you. Yes. One question. Yes. Stephanie in the chat said there's now going to be a meeting on the 16th. Okay, yeah, I was going there next. Thanks for the transition. 416, yeah, so that's our next regularly, regularly scheduled meeting. Um, and the, um, I do not believe dogs are on the agenda and we can check that. Um, we have to take care of some other matters getting ready into the field season. So we need to hold that meeting free of this topic so we can make some decisions to let the park staff do what they need to do. And then 5-7, May 7th, Tuesday will be a special meeting will be another hearing, another chance for public comment, followed by a vote that night. So please do attend all of our meetings. They're all public. Please do continue to reach out to us. Please do continue to digest this information. And is there anything else we missed? A little caveat about the yeah. 416 meeting. Usually there's a public comment period at the beginning for topics that are not on the agenda. So if dogs are not on the agenda, you could come comment. <laughs> That's that 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 a fact. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess we'll just set the agenda for that before, or should we just have to that after? Like, during, do we need to do that during the year? We don't, we don't haven't actually set the no. agenda. Right, we haven't set the agenda. Yeah. Okay, but it will be posted. Yeah, um, we'll post it this week. So with, yeah, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, did you say that we're going to try to make a decision on May 7th? We are. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So, we are going to be making a decision on May 7th for the record again and again and hold ourselves accountable um, to making a decision. So with that, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay, second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your evening. Thank you.